Next, we are going to discuss the concepts of local and global optima. These are some of the most fundamental concepts in the field of optimization because this is what we are searching for when we solve the optimization problems. So what is a local minimum? So here we are talking about a general problem, which is to minimize f of x subject to x belongs to some set x. All right, so and this set x is a subset of uh, the Euclidean space of dimension n, let's say. And typically it's defined by a set of some functional constraints. For example, you could have minimize f of x such that g of x is less than or equal to zero or something of this sort. But uh, whenever we want to keep it general, we specify the constraints in the set form. So this set x is a subset of Rn that contains our feasible points. Okay, so and now how do we define a point of a local minimum? A point x star in x is a point of local minimum of f over the set x if there exists some epsilon greater than zero such that for any x in the set x with the distance at most epsilon from our point x star, we have the property that f of x is greater or equal to f of x star. So now let's illustrate this in uh, one dimension first. Okay, so here we have a one dimensional feasible set x. Our x capital is going to be some part of this real line. We are talking about n equal to one in this case. So let's say, assume that x capital is given by this interval right here. So this is our feasible region. All right, so we are trying to minimize this function f of x over this interval right here. Okay, so we look at, say, point x1. And we can see that point x1 has the lowest objective in some proximity of this point. So if I select some epsilon, so epsilon usually represents some small positive number, and I select this epsilon neighborhood, as we call it, around point x1. I can select a small enough neighborhood around this point such that for any point within this small neighborhood, f of x1 is going to be less than or equal to f of x for any point x within this interval. All right, so and as long as I can find a tiny little interval around the point x1, where this point is the best point with respect to our objective function, we can claim local optimality. It doesn't matter how small that interval where this point is the best is, okay? So here we are talking about the existence of the interval. So it can be really, really tiny, it can be big, you know, but as long as you have the tiniest little neighborhood of this point where it is the best, we call it a local minimum. Okay, so similarly, you can see that x2 is a local minimum also because I can find a small interval around this point such that this point is inside of this interval where this point is the best with respect to the objective value. So it has the smallest objective among all the points in this small neighborhood. Similarly, for the points x3, x4, and x5, if I look at a neighborhood of x3, the point x3 is the best in this small interval, but even though it is not strictly the best because there are points with the same objective here, and whatever small neighborhood I take, there are always points with actually the same objective as for x3 because this part of the function plot is actually parallel to the x-axis. So it corresponds to the values of f that are the same over this interval between x3 and x5. So each of these points in this interval between x3 and x5 is a local minimizer but none of them is strictly the best in any of the intervals around that point. So we can say that none of this local optima is strict local minimum. 
which brings us to the definition of a strict local minimum. So we call a point x star a point of strict local minimum of f over the set x if there exists some small epsilon neighborhood around this point such that for any point in that neighborhood other than x star the objective of f is going to be strictly greater than f of x star. So which means that x star is strictly the best in that interval. So again for x1 this interval that I selected here is such that x1 is strictly the best in this interval. So because this is the only point where I reach the objective this low for any point in this small neighborhood the objective will be strictly greater. So therefore x1 is a strict local minimum. Similarly x2 is a strict local minimum but none of the local minima in the interval between x3 and x5 is a strict local minimum because no matter how small neighborhood of each of these points I take there are always points in that neighborhood where objective is going to be exactly the same as in my point therefore all of these points in this uh, interval and there are infinitely many of them will be local minimizers but none of them will be a strict local minimizer. And similarly we can define the local maximality and strict local maximality by essentially reversing the signs in these inequalities. So for a local maximum we would have here f of x less than or equal to f of x star which means that x star has the largest objective in some small neighborhood of x star and then uh, here we would have f of x is strictly less than f of x star for any x other than x star in the neighborhood of x star which means that x star has a strictly largest objective in that small neighborhood of it. All right so next we are going to define the concept of the global minimum. So essentially we call x star a point of global minimum of f over x if for any point within the feasible set f of x is greater or equal to f of x star. So essentially x star is globally the best point in the feasible set. Any other point you take the objective cannot be less than it is at x star. All right, so and for our problem, again, assuming that we restrict ourselves to the parts of the real axis that we can see, so this is our x capital, so we can see that x2 is in optimum position, would be our global minimizer because this is the point where the function takes the lowest value in this feasible set. All right, so this is our global minimum point. So there are some local minima that are not global. So we saw that this was a local minimum here. So this was our point x1. Then we had here x3, then x4 somewhere here, x5. All of these were local minima, but there is only one global minimum for this problem here. And we call this global minimum strict if there is no other point in the feasible region where f of x has the same value. So for all other points than x star you have f of x is strictly greater than f of x star. And, um, and whenever you have a strict global minimum this means that your global minimum is unique because once you have two global minima this means that their objectives match and this means that none of them is strict, right? So because according to the definition of a strict global minimum your global minimum must be such that no other point in the feasible set, not just in some small neighborhood, but in the whole of the feasible set, can match the objective that you have at this point of strict global minimum. All right. So the concepts of global maximum and strict global maximum would be defined similarly, but again, we would reverse the signs of these inequalities. Here we would have less than or equal to and here we would have strictly less. But uh, the idea is similar. The point must be the best in the feasible region or strictly the best in the feasible region, meaning that it is a unique maximizer.